that time, I had my clothing store. A kid by the name of Shaman worked for me, and I was going to release my first clothing line, okay, Cloud of Blind Clothing. So we're talking maybe three weeks go by. I've now bought a house in Palmdale, California. Before Palmdale uh, became... When it was... Seems like now Beautiful. it's where... Oh, it's fucking... It's, again, it's, for, it's for child molesters in Section 8. And I bought a house for, from when GMC, GMAC went out of business. I bought a house from a Spanish family for $86,000 cash. And I swear to you, on my life, every bit of the money was dope money. And the bag smelled... She was like, you don't have a bank account? I was like, you want the money or not? And I bought the house that day. Long story short, I had someone give me a fake profile to get another cell phone. And I go down, I put on a workman-like delivery shirt and act like I'm the guy picking up the phone. And I pick up the phone, because you know we have the magic show in Vegas? Well, there's the something show in San Diego. I think it was called the Spring Show. We didn't bring any clothes for that. I got a mail Oh, done. Um, and I remember, like this was yesterday, walking in to get this phone, and I had Shaman submitting the paperwork like I was this business guy, and I had this fake profile, fake social, everything. What well, turns out, the reason why I got caught, the guy from the cell phone place contacted Burbank Police Department, and they're like, and he's like, sends this picture over. And it was my picture. He contacted him just about just about the phone. Fraud. And Burbank Police Department ran a NCIC and hit a tab on Los Angeles. And the guy who owned the tailor shop next door had told the story of how he saw a guy, you know, and fit, fit my description. And I go to San Diego. I, mean, I swear to you, bro, this is, I've never actually gone this far with this story. I remember walking in to get the phone and I got like the fake tablet. I went through the whole, this cell phones back then were like four grand. And the guy's like, literally he won't, he's like, yeah, okay, mm-hmm, yeah, Mr. whatever fucking name I use. Yeah. And I walk out and I got my phone. I go pick up this Asian kid who is going to be my developer who worked for a factory for clothing. We go to San Diego. I got the fake profile for the hotel, the whole deal. The next, that Monday, I'm driving home. I tell Shaman, like, hey, don't go in the store tomorrow. Just go down to the hotel. And I pull up and I'd heard we were getting new security. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this is the new security. Because I see the dude and I'm like, Hmm, maybe that's the new security. And I get out of my car and I see him go like this. Ooh. And he goes, Elon. Elon. And he had, by now he put his jacket on, my garage opens up. Fucking eight cops come rushing out. They cuff me. I get inside. I see my who's supposed to be having our baby that week. My ex-wife sitting there with her hands handcuffed behind her back. Yeah, we're over. In the house, right there in the living room. And I lose my, I'm like, yo, take the fucking cuffs off her and this female cop, this is in my paperwork. This female cop's like, you don't fuck, she was a sorry, you don't run, and I hate female, I hate cops, period. Everybody knows the story. I, I, and this female cop is like, you don't fucking run nothing, and goes like this with her, shut the fuck up. And as I backed up, I drop kicked her right in her fucking face. Oh. I woke up with every knot. My eye was like this for like. <laughs> and, and I thought they were there for the phones. And I remember they wake me up at like three that morning. Or like, Cause I had bell. So I'm like, yo, arrange my bell. And uh, they're like, yo, you have another charge for grand theft larceny with assault with deadly intent. 
And I'm like, what the fuck is Grand Theft Larson? I'm like asking my bunk, like, the fuck is Larson? Went through the guy's pockets. Went through the guy's pocket and went into his car. I ended up pleading to a manslaughter charge and I got more time for the Grand Theft Larceny than I did for the manslaughter. I got a year for the, it's one to 15. But I got more for the Grand Theft Larceny going through his pockets and going through his car. You didn't get shit from him. So, no. um, you know, there's, you've told your prison stories, plenty of prison stories. I don't want to oh. drag into it too much, but we do need to hear it. So kind of briefly just give us what you think the important highlights of your time in prison were. The highlights is never go. But to walk in there and I was 165 pounds, soaking wet, you know, I, had, I still had like juvie size. This little, is not you know. true. This is when the prisons are being filled Bruh, with violent criminals. I got to the transition room to get processed and the room set 50 occupancy in there. I remember the counter was 112 of us. And another nigga's butt cheeks are sitting on the inner side of your your calves. Oh, I was in bullpen where you, you had to, someone was sleeping with their head under the toilet. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, yeah. that's just. It, Max was supposed to be four to a room. It was six to a room. There's really only two beds, but they would go, well, you go that way. No, it was like me and another nigga and another nigga here and two on the bunk. Um, I got there being from rolling 60 crypt thing and that mattered. But in the county jail, Fuck it, get to prison. Oh, prison. The county, yeah, it's like, you know, you, 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 yeah. But when I got to prison and, um, you know, the mind state of them yelling yeah, out. Max. Oh, yeah, from the gate. I had a four number the moment I got there. And them yelling out Guillermo Elan. And I said, Four eight seven three nine four, and Mexicans going like this. No sir, no, no second mess. I still wear it, they fucker. Like he's not with us. Yeah. And niggas like, cause you's a Mexican. Like there's an X in there. There's no S. Like, <laughs> this, you know what I mean? And, yeah, Mexican. Nigga, you's a Mexican. There's, it's at the end. It's like, like, kids. And again, I've done jail time. I've done, but it was like, nah, nigga, you. And even talking about it now, I literally could tell you, even now I get a taste in my throat of like a metal. I swear to you in my life, right as I started talking right now. Okay. That's the best time I did it. <laughs> it's kind of high, bro. Okay. Well, let's um, just People can tell whatever fucking story they want. There is nothing. And the gang shit is just like the rap shit. All of a sudden, a, a dude that would not be your homie on the streets from another gang is now your best friend in prison. Because of the racism. Yes. And it blacks are out now. Yes. And I had to, you know, my tattoo say neighborhood, 60th Street. I had to be what I had to be. Um, I, it took me a while to learn my program. And I learned it, and I'm, you know, some I've never looked back on. Did you make a decision? Hey, what the fuck am I gonna do when I get out? And when did the mute did the music idea get into your head in jail or not? It was Ice T. I came home in '98. He. So they made you do six. Oh yeah, yeah. Because of you were getting in trouble in jail or just. Well, you it's a it's a one to fifteen. You're gonna do a Mando, and then I had a I I. Kept fucking up on my number and fucking up on my points. Uh, I kept yeah, so it wasn't yet. Yeah. So it wasn't six. It was five and ten. Five years, ten months. And I walk in. I've known Darlene since his ex, Darlene, Lil Ice's mom. Since we're all kids, you know, I dated her her cousin. And I walk in, and Ice was like, "Nah, I'm like two ten. One in, one sixty five. I came out two oh nine, two ten. And I was like, "Damn." Yeah, this is before I'm even 18 years of age. I'm already selling dope to Billy Preston, the fifth Beatle. I'm already selling dope to Charlie Wilson from the Gap Band. I'm already selling dope to Freeman William, the highest player from the Boston Celtics. I'm already sitting in the Huntington Motel selling dope to Norm Nixon and Marcus Johnson. 